Number 10. Antarctic UFO In Antarctica, there's a UFO mystery. What appears to be a troop of military vehicles hidden in the snow has been spotted using Google Earth. The images on Google Earth show what seem to be the crash site of an unidentified object being guarded by four equally unidentifiable objects, looking a lot like army tanks. Fun fact, these are actually known as UGOs, or Unidentified Ground Objects. While they may have been flying at one point, they're now firmly grounded. But just what on earth could this image be showing us? There's a huge skid mark in the snow as if the object impacted the ground and then slid to a stop. And it looks like army vehicles went to intercept it. Even more mysterious is that images taken just two months prior showed the crash, but no military vehicles. The vehicles must have arrived later, though nobody can quite understand why they were left in the snow for everyone to find on Google Earth. Shouldn't they have gone back to wherever they came from after their standoff with the unidentified object? Then there's the actual scale to worry about. Judging by the size of the objects on Google Earth, each supposed tank would be over 7 feet in length, far more gargantuan than anything ever created by human hands. Plus, there are no tracks in the snow to show how the vehicles got there. So far, nobody's been able to explain anything about this strange Antarctic mystery. Do you think there could be extraterrestrials or UFOs in Antarctica? Let me know in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe if you're new here. Number 9. Hundreds of Corpses There are hundreds of corpses frozen in Antarctica that scientists have yet to discover. According to Martha Henriquez, who worked on the Frozen Continent series for the BBC, many of the people who die in Antarctica are left behind and their bodies become buried in the snow, never to be found again. Some are discovered several decades after perishing. Some are even found hundreds of years later. Antarctica is the coldest and windiest place on our planet, making it a pretty bad place to lose a body. Take the Terra Nova expedition, which went out between 1910 and 1913. The British explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his team of four men wanted to reach the South Pole before anyone else. Unfortunately, when they got there, they realized a Norwegian explorer had beaten them to the punch. So Scott and the rest of the team turned and went back. They all died inside their tent only 11 miles from the nearest food depot. Two of their bodies were never uncovered, but two of them were found a few months later. Because the conditions were so miserable, there wasn't much that could be done for the bodies, and so they were left behind. But here's where things get really interesting. Trying to find the corpses of the expedition today would be a logistical nightmare because they have undoubtedly traveled miles from where they had originally dropped dead. This is because the ice surface of Antarctica shifts with time, causing displacement. Those bodies are probably lost forever. Number 8. Extraterrestrial Amino Acids Astrobiologists working from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center recently found a diversity of extraterrestrial amino acids inside of a meteorite. The meteorite was taken from the Nansen Ice Field in Antarctica by researchers from Belgium and Japan back in 2012. The meteorite is called Asuka 12236 and was found to be packed full of amino acids such as glycine, isovaline, glutamic, and alanine. If you're not sure what amino acids are, they're basically the building blocks of proteins. We need amino acids to survive. But just what exactly are they doing in space rocks? Well, it's a bit of a mystery. Nobody's really sure how these organics evolve on things like asteroids where most meteorites come from. And yet, there's a whole collection of space rocks rich in carbon known as CM chondrites, just like this Antarctic meteorite. Researchers believe that by studying these amino acids more completely and understanding what they're doing inside of seemingly lifeless rocks hurled to our planet through space, we will unlock the secrets of the universe and maybe even the secret to life itself. Number 7. Mysterious Ice Ship A giant and very mysterious ship that appears to either be made out of ice or blanketed in snow was recently discovered in Antarctica, allegedly over 400 feet in length. The ship was spotted by someone using Google Earth. It was found roughly 100 miles off the coast of Antarctica, sitting on an iceberg. Others who saw the giant ice ship were quick to point out its striking resemblance to a cruise liner. It really does look like some kind of cruise vessel that would be giving tours around the Greek islands. It even has a bunch of window shapes running across its hole, as if viewing windows for personal cabins. But the big question is, why would the giant boat be lying sideways on an iceberg? It doesn't make any sense. One of the most reasonable explanations is that the ship was actually wrecked and the ice simply grew over it. It could have been a vessel used in battle during World War II that got lost and crashed in Antarctica. It could have been part of a secret Nazi base on the continent. The truth is that nobody knows and no officials have come forward to identify what the bizarre ship is or how it came to be resting on the center of an iceberg. And to be totally honest, we probably won't know the origins of the mysterious ship until the iceberg melts and the ship slips off. Number 6. The World's Largest Iceberg Speaking of icebergs, the largest iceberg in the entire world has just slipped off the Rhone Ice Shelf in Antarctica. But slipped off is a pretty gentle word. The iceberg really broke off, becoming a floating piece of ice about half the size of Puerto Rico. 
The iceberg is known scientifically as A76, and according to the New York Times, it's separated naturally from Antarctica. It measures 1,668 square miles, making it a bit larger than the last big iceberg to break off from the shelf. A23A, which formed in 1986 and had a total area of 1,500 square miles. As for the biggest iceberg in recorded history, that was B-15, which broke off the Ross Ice Shelf, still Antarctica but a totally different area, in 2000, and measured over 4,200 square miles, over twice the size of A-76. And before everyone starts freaking out about climate change, scientists are saying that the separation was natural and may not have had anything to do with the climate. They also say the iceberg won't add to the rise of the sea level while it melts because it's floating ice and already displaces the same volume of water. It's like ice melting in your cup. Melting ice can't make your cup overflow. Christopher A. Schumann from the University of Maryland compared the new iceberg to a fingernail clipping, saying Antarctica is basically just getting a manicure. Number 5. Fossilized Sea Monster A large and terrifying monster has been discovered in Antarctica. It's what scientists are calling an elasimosaur, and is further proof that Antarctica was once a thriving ecosystem filled with dinosaurs, flying creatures, and sea monsters. The elasmosaur navigated the oceans during the Cretaceous period, alongside countless dinos. The fossil discovered by scientists on a small and desolate island off the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula belonged to the heaviest elasmosaur currently on record. This beast weighed over 15 tons. Even more amazing, the elasmosaur is one of the only complete reptile fossils from ancient times ever found on Antarctica. But just what was an elasmosaur other than a large and terrifying reptile? According to National Geographic, elasmosaurs were part of the plesiosaur family, representing the largest sea creatures that lived about 66 million years ago. The creature looked a lot like a modern manatee mixed with a giraffe and an anaconda, with a little bit of Loch Ness Monster thrown in for good measure. They had four flippers and could probably grow to be over 40 feet in length. And considering how big the animal was, it would have needed a lot of food to eat, suggesting that before the huge extinction event 66 million years ago, the area around Antarctica had been teeming with enough wildlife to keep a large population of predatory elasmosaurs happy with lots and lots of meat. What do you think about this incredible prehistoric beast? Let me know in the comments down below. Number 4. Snow Pyramid There just might be a giant pyramid covered with snow in Antarctica. This is either a new and amazing discovery or a tasteless hoax. The issue is that the pyramid was discovered using Google Earth. The good news is that it definitely looks like a massive pyramid. The object seems to be made of some kind of black obsidian, with its point and two of its sides exposed from the snow. The other two sides are still covered, but that's another thing. The pyramid has four sides that look identical to the Great Pyramid of Giza, and it would be a pretty difficult thing for nature to try and mimic. As you may already know, nature doesn't really build in symmetry. At least not when it comes to random rock formations in the middle of Antarctica. This thing clearly looks as if it were made by intelligent hands. The photos of the pyramid are baffling people all around the world and not a single mainstream scientist has come forward to either debunk or confirm what we all can see is obviously a pyramid. The issue is that nobody knows who could have possibly built the pyramid or when. It's obviously quite old. We do know that there may have been ancient civilizations living in Antarctica upwards of 10,000 years ago. It could be a leftover ruin. One of the more outlandish claims is that the pyramid is only one part of the lost city of Atlantis, which is actually on the Antarctic continent, but has never been explored because nobody has known where to look. Number 3. Mysterious Photographs In 1915, an expedition from New Zealand to Antarctica known as the Ross Sea Party tried to establish a supply depot for explorers. Unfortunately, they had some issues with their ship. Six men ended up stranded on Antarctica with almost no hope of being saved. They spent three years struggling just to stay alive before finally being rescued. 98 years after the harrowing ordeal, traces of their time spent in Antarctica were finally found. It happened while conservators were restoring one of the supply huts the party had squatted in. What they discovered were 22 unprocessed negatives inside of a box. They had been left there by the Ross Sea Party. After nearly 100 years, the negatives were still viable. Photographs were developed using the negatives, telling an eerie tale of their journey gone wrong. The photographs didn't show any dramatic moments. They didn't photograph anybody practicing cannibalism or something frightening, but the still shots are fascinating nonetheless, showing the men on the ship, presumably before disaster struck. So far, these are some of the oldest modern relics found on the continent. Number 2. Antarctica Itself One of the most interesting discoveries ever made in Antarctica was Antarctica Itself. It happened 200 years ago, and depending on who you ask, the answer to who found Antarctica is a little different. A Russian expedition in 1820 may have spotted Antarctica first, Either that or it may have been a British expedition three days later. At the time, explorers were hunting for what was then known as Terra Australis Incognita, translated to unknown southern land, 
Everyone knew there was something at the bottom of the world, they just didn't know what. James Cook searched for it for between 1772 and 1775. He came up empty-handed. At the time, he claimed that it was so risky to try and find the mysterious land at the end of the world that nobody would ever venture farther than he had, and that the lands would never be explored. According to National Geographic, James Cook had come within 80 miles of Antarctica's coast. Antarctica was finally spotted in 1820 by both Russians and the British. The Russians were technically the first ones to find Antarctica and see it with their own eyes, but the first person who ever stepped foot on Antarctica was an American named John Davis in 1821. So who was first, the man who spotted it or the one who touched it? Number 1. Proof of Mass Extinction Christian Sitter, the curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Burke Museum, recently spent two months in Antarctica looking for fossils. What he discovered is proof that there was a mass extinction prior to 250 million years ago. During his work in Antarctica, Christian found the fossils of animals that may have been closely related to reptiles. He also found fossils belonging to distant relatives of amphibians. But even more shocking is that he claimed to have discovered fossils of animals that are distant relatives of mammals. Some of these animals were apparently digging burrows back in the Triassic period. In some places he found footprints, and in some places he found plant material. But what does all this information mean? It means that there was a very active ecosystem on the continent of Antarctica a quarter of a billion years ago. There also may have been an unknown extinction event that caused them all to die. Still, researchers don't know what species many of these fossils belong to, or how relatives of mammals were found when mammals didn't start evolving until after the death of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. It's a total mystery, and one that paleontologists are working hard to solve. Number 10. The Ningen The Ningen is a mysterious aquatic cryptid. It's a kind of humanoid fish said to be about the size of a whale. That's a big fish. The creature has its roots in Japanese mythology as a type of bizarre and slightly disturbing mermaid. But it's not only found in the waters around Japan, it's apparently been spotted in the Arctic too. The Ningen was allegedly seen and photographed by a Japanese research vessel during a trip to Antarctica. The creature is said to have pale white skin, a build kind of like a human with a torso, and two long arm-like appendages. It's what a mermaid would probably look like if it were the size of a sperm whale and more of a monster from hell than a beautiful woman. The ghostly underwater creature has been described as having very few facial features, though it does apparently have two piercing giant eyes that are quite horrifying to look at. The Ningen has been spotted only at night and only in cold water, and because of all the obscure videos and vague pictures that have caught the beast near Antarctica, it's believed that it lives under the ice, which is why it's been so hard to pinpoint its exact locations. There's no definitive proof that the Ningen exists, especially since it likely originated as an old wives' tale told by Japanese sailors. Still, some say the government actually takes Ningen sightings seriously, suggesting they may even know more about its existence than they want the rest of the world to know. Number 9. UFO over China Speaking of taking an unexpected sighting seriously, ABC News says that China recently witnessed a UFO and forced one of their airports to close down. That's about as serious as a UFO sighting can get. Here's what happened. The UFO flew into the airspace around Shaoshan Airport on July 7th. It was a flight crew that first detected the object and notified air traffic control. Authorities responded in just minutes. Outbound flights were grounded and inbound flights were diverted. The shutdown affected 18 flights in total while authorities investigated what was really going on. Just an hour later, everything was back to normal. Of course, it's not like the Chinese government would come out and admit that an alien ship had been flying around. But witnesses near the airport saw red and white rays of light and witnessed some kind of strange glowing object hovering over the city and exuding a brilliant gold color. It could have been a natural phenomenon or some kind of military device, or it could have been a literal alien spacecraft that caused so many people to panic. What do you think it was? Number 8. The Shuswagi In Canada, eyewitnesses reported seeing a terrifying monster that could be the infamous Shuswagi, a Loch Ness type of creature said to inhabit Shuswap Lake. A local woman was strolling along the beach one day just minding her business when she witnessed a huge creature slithering through the water. It happened to her twice on May 14th. The witness's name is Don Dumont, and she first spotted the strange animal while driving to an appointment, then again later at the public beach. According to her, she saw large black humps gliding through the water. The strange creature did a bit of twirling, then it went under and didn't surface again. And just like most Loch Ness monster sightings, this one comes included with a very vague image of what could be a monster or just a wave in the middle of the lake. Dumont had this to say in a report of the incident. I just got comfortable and all of a sudden I heard some splashing around off in the distance there. I was looking and I was like, what is that? 
and so I thought I'm gonna get this on video because whatever that is, it's huge. This sighting is definitely hard to explain. Number 7. Headless Chicken Monster A very strange creature has been spotted in the Southern Ocean and captured on video for the second time in history. The Smithsonian Magazine calls it the Headless Chicken Monster of the Sea. It was caught on film by Australian researchers conducting a video survey of the deep waters around the Southern Ocean. They captured a lot of strange things on video, most of them weirder than any Yeti or Bigfoot you've ever heard of. The ocean is full of all kinds of bizarre creatures after all, but the real prize was when they spotted a creature with a very pink hue that kind of looks like a blob or like a headless chicken before it's put in the oven to bake. The researchers had no clue what this strange monster actually was. It wasn't until the day was finished and they were able to do even more research that they figured out it was an elusive sea cucumber only captured on video once previously in the Gulf of Mexico. What's really interesting about the headless chicken monster is that it must live throughout many different parts of the ocean and yet is almost never seen. If underwater researchers don't recognize the animal, it's definitely an anomaly. Nobody knows how many of these weird critters are around or what they do, but seeing as they're sea cucumbers, they probably spend most of their time sifting through the sediment on the ocean floor and floating around like big gelatinous blobs. Have you ever seen a creature in the ocean that you couldn't explain? Let me know in the comments section down below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. The Jersey Devil A man claims to have spotted the Jersey Devil. His name is Dave Black, and he said as he drove past a local golf course in New Jersey, he swears he witnessed the devil in the flesh. At first he thought he saw a llama. The creature was sprinting through the trees. He didn't understand what kind of llama would be loose on a golf course and running through the woods though. But then the creature spread leathery wings like a bat and flew away. Unfortunately, Dave Black did not respond to emails from The Guardian asking him to clarify his sighting. The picture he took of the animal looks incredibly fake like perhaps a taxidermy goat with fake wings stitched to its back. However, it has convinced quite a few people, and after all, there have been stories of a strange monster in the Jersey area for centuries. But depending on who you ask, the Jersey Devil is a little different. Some say the Jersey Devil began life as a 17th century settler, some say it's a beast from Native American mythology, and others say it's the mutated 13th child of Mother Leeds. No matter which way you look, the Jersey Devil has a different origin story. But the one thing that remains the same is that people keep seeing some kind of demonic thing with wings. And this time it was caught flying over a golf course. Number 5. The Flatwoods Monster The Flatwoods Monster might just be an alien. It was witnessed once on September 12, 1952 in the small village of Flatwoods, West Virginia. Almost 70 years later, the encounter is still so famous that tourists come from all over with hopes of seeing the beast and to purchase their monster souvenirs in Flatwoods. But in 1952, it was very serious business. At dusk, two schoolboy brothers were playing with their friend when they saw a red streak of light flare across the sky and crash into a nearby field. The brothers grabbed their mom and ran to check out the scene where the light had crashed. Some other boys and a dog also showed up to see what all the commotion was about. That was when a monster estimated to be 10 feet and looking like Frankenstein's creation appeared in the hills. It was witnessed by seven different residents and described as being a huge beast with bright red eyes and a green face. Nobody really knows what the monster was that night. There was an investigation afterward, the state police blamed it on hysteria, and within just a few hours the monster had grown from 10 feet to 17 feet. Some say the witnesses were scared because of the national fear of atomic bombs and atomic monsters. But what it really sounds like is that Flatwoods was visited by a green-faced alien with burning red eyes. Number 4. Aquatic Monster An aquatic monster has been spotted in the Yangtze River in China. Video has surfaced of what appears to be some kind of slithery serpent swimming near a ferry dock in the Hubei province. There are several different angles, probably captured by different people visiting the river who all happened to see the black thing as it glided across the water. Unfortunately, the video footage is very grainy. This is pretty suspicious considering most smartphones shoot very reliable video in this day and age. In fact, it's so suspicious that Professor Wang Chun Fang with the Huazhong Agricultural University says there's no monster at all. So what could it be? Is there really some sort of water beast swimming in Chinese waters? The professor says there's a good possibility that it could just be a water snake. But water snakes don't really get that large. It could actually just have been a piece of trash that got snagged on something at the bottom of the river and spent a few minutes splashing around, looking like an aquatic monster. Number 3. The Werewolf Farmer In 16th century Germany, life wasn't exactly simple. A farmer was accused of being a werewolf and making a pact with the devil. His name was Stumpf, and he lived outside of Bedburg. At the time, there was a lot of fighting between the Protestants and the Catholics, and a lot of people in the town were turning up dead. Someone began to whisper about a wolf creature roaming the countryside and eating humans, and it wasn't long before the rumors started to spread. 
In 1589, when a group of men tracking the wolf finally cornered it, the wolf was gone and Farmer Stumpf was there instead. The immediate thought was that he himself was the wolf, or wolf man I should say, and that he transformed back into being a human just before they caught him. This was only one of the first supposed sightings of a werewolf. The poor farmer was threatened that he'd be tortured, so he confessed to murdering 13 children, a pair of pregnant women, and one man. He also admitted to making a pact with the devil and eating unborn children. He then was allegedly sentenced to have the flesh pulled from his bones with hot pincers, and to have his legs and arms broken, and his head chopped off his body. After all, if you're gonna do the crime, you gotta do the time. But there's no solid evidence that this story's even real. Number 2. Bigfoot on Trail Cam In Michigan, something strange was sighted on a trail cam. A monster that looked an awful lot like a big hairy ape was seen running past the camera, and people were immediately convinced that it was Bigfoot. However, hope soon turned to disappointment when just a few days later, footage from a different trail camera was taken 13 minutes after the supposed Bigfoot ran by. This footage showed that it was nothing but a bear. But not to fear, according to the Upper Peninsula Bigfoot Sasquatch Research Organization, there were other sightings in the area of Bigfoot that could be more legit. On the 5th of September, a motorist driving through light fog reported seeing a large figure that looked like a person in a ghillie suit, which is a kind of hunting camouflage. This could have been a Bigfoot. After the driver saw the creature, they slowed down to get a better look at the area, but were shocked to see no trail or driveway. It wasn't even hunting season, so it made no sense that a hunter would be running around in a ghillie suit. The only logical explanation, of course, is Bigfoot. Or maybe another bear. I don't know, what do you think? Do you believe in Bigfoot? Number 1. The Loch Ness Monster The Loch Ness Monster has been spotted in a very strange place. As you probably know already, the Loch Ness Monster is usually seen in Loch Ness, the Scottish lake where she's allegedly been living for the last few centuries. However, something that looked a lot like the Loch Ness Monster was seen swimming through the River Thames in London. Video footage was uploaded online showing a dark object bobbing through the water, looking quite similar to other video footage from Loch Ness. The big question here is how the monster could have possibly gotten all the way from Scotland to England. It didn't exactly rent a car and go on vacation. Some have claimed that the creature could be a second Loch Ness Monster that nobody knew about before, living in the large river which cuts through most of the city of London. The animal seemed to have humps on its back just like the original Loch Ness Monster. It also looked kind of like a reptilian sea creature with a long neck. Could there really be multiple monsters unknown to modern scientists living throughout the UK? Or on the other hand, could it just have been a piece of trash floating down the river? Right now, nobody knows the truth. Number 10. The Night Witches One of the least known groups from World War II were the Night Witches. These were not real witches. Instead, they were female pilots who flew through the darkness of night in archaic plywood biplanes from the 1920s to go beyond German lines and rain down hellfire on the enemy. These women battled horrible harassment on the ground from their very own countrymen, treated skeptically and as if they didn't belong in the army. And yet by night, these ladies flew through the frostbitten air to wreak havoc on the Germans who feared the Night Witches so completely that when a single German airman managed to shoot one of them down, he was awarded with an Iron Cross medal. The Night Witches were part of the 588th Night Bomber Regiment, and they dropped over 23,000 tons of bombs on the evil Nazis. The reason they used biplanes instead of modern planes is that they could easily sweep into enemy territory without being spotted by modern tech. They were too small to show up on standard radar and couldn't be seen on infrared locators. They didn't use radios and couldn't be tracked that way either. They were basically ghosts. But here's the deal. You might have thought the Night Witches were American or maybe even British, but they were actually Soviet. The squadron itself was the idea of Marina Raskova, known by historians as the Soviet Amelia Earhart. She was the first female navigator in the Soviet Air Force. She also had an extensive record of long-distance flights. In the end, the Night Witches proved a vital part of the Soviets pushing back the Germans and making it to Berlin. Their last flight was May 4, 1945, just three days before Germany surrendered. Number 9. The Downed Pilot A young boy in Denmark was researching the topic of World War II for his history class when he accidentally discovered the wreckage of a fighter plane in a field near his house, complete with the ghoulish remains of the pilot in the cockpit. The bizarre story behind this pilot's death is amazing. According to CNN, the Danish boy went out with his father and a metal detector to look for relics from the war. The boy's father was hopeful they would find some plates or something interesting for him to show at school. But then they began to find pieces of plane debris. They actually borrowed an excavator from the neighbor and dug until they found the full aircraft, which the father believed must have crashed in November or December of 1944 based on an old story his grandfather had told him. 
The curator of the Historical Museum of Northern Jutland was given the possessions found on the pilot, along with other relevant clues to confirm the man's identity and find out his story. It's now believed that the pilot came from a German training base, though it's not clear how he crashed. In his pockets, the Danish boy found his wallet, a few scraps of ID papers, and three unused condoms. It's not clear what exactly this guy thought he was going to do with those by himself up in his airplane, but he crashed before he could ever use them. Number 8. Pearl Harbor The Empire of Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, just shortly before 8 o'clock in the morning. People today don't really have a full idea of what happened. Yes, it was a brutal surprise attack from Japan, but it didn't actually come out of nowhere. Japan and the United States were already having serious differences. Japan declared war on China in 1937 and continuously pushed into Chinese territory, committing massacres and other horrible atrocities. The Americans were not happy about this, and so they smacked Japan with economic sanctions and trade embargoes. They thought that without access to money and oil, Japan would behave nicely. This sour relationship went on for quite some time. There were negotiations between Tokyo and Washington, but nothing ever worked out. War was really inevitable by the time Pearl Harbor happened. The only real surprise is that nobody had anticipated an attack so close to the North American continent. The Americans thought that if Japan were to attack, it would be somewhere closer to them, like a European colony in the South Pacific, maybe Singapore or Indochina. When the planes came crashing down in Pearl Harbor, it was a huge surprise. Over 2,400 United States citizens died, 20 naval vessels were destroyed or heavily damaged, and 300 planes were taken out. But as most of us know, this was a grave error for Japan. Their goal was to wipe out the entire Pacific fleet so that the U.S. couldn't fight back as Japan continued their rampage. But of course, they did fight back, and they won. Number 7. Without a tail fin The B-29 Super Fortress was the most advanced airplane, or at least one of them during World War II. It had guns that could fire via remote control, it was the heaviest production plane in the world and had a massive range, along with huge bomb loads and massive defense capabilities. It utilized the high speed of a Boeing 117 while having increased lift. They were used heavily in the war in the Pacific, with at least 1,000 of them bombing Tokyo throughout the war. It was a B-29 called the Enola Gay that actually dropped the first atomic bomb ever on Hiroshima, followed by a second B-29 three days later dropping the second atomic bomb on Nagasaki. But there was one B-29 superfortress that proved more capable than the others. It was nicknamed the Rover Boys Express, and its mission was to destroy Tokyo. The plane was part of a larger force who met serious resistance as they flew over Mount Fuji. While being shot, the B-29 lost its tail fin. The whole squadron was overwhelmed and gunned down in the air. But even without its tail fin, the B-29 kept fighting to the last second. It made a messy crash landing into a village, killing seven civilians. Seven crew members managed to bail out, were captured by the Japanese, with only five surviving to the end of the war as prisoners, eventually liberated and set free. Number 6. Hitler Fooled by a Homeless Man A dead homeless man named Glinder Michael became a war hero in January of 1943 after he was found dead in the city of London from eating rat poison. At his time of death, he was 34 years old and destitute. Also, there was a scheme to trick the Nazis into thinking that the Allies were about to attack Greece instead of Sicily. But they needed a body to trick Hitler. So they took this homeless guy and made him a part of what would be codenamed Operation Mincemeat. He was transformed into Major William Martin. He was given a death notice in a newspaper with forged documents and love letters. He was dressed up like a Royal Marine. Then his corpse was thrown into the water where it would ultimately be found and then handed over to the Spanish authorities. But why was it so important for the Spanish to find the homeless guy's body? because the British had given him some very fake documents outlining an invasion of Sardinia in Greece. A fisherman dragged the homeless guy's body from the ocean, the papers were found on his body and turned over to the Nazi command, and eventually they made it to Hitler's desk. Hitler then ordered a huge bulk of defenses to be diverted to Greece, taking much-needed troops from Russia. But instead of attacking Greece, the Allied forces landed in Sicily and won the day without heavy casualties. The homeless man, or at least his body, was a hero. Number 5. The Survivor Tsutomu Yamaguchi survived being hit by two atomic bombs. He was preparing to leave the city of Hiroshima when the first bomb hit. Of course, he wasn't in the instant kill zone, but he was close enough to feel the shockwave, which apparently spun him through the air like a tornado and sent him hurtling into a patch of potatoes. He was about two miles from ground zero. After Yamaguchi woke up, he could see the falling ash and the cloud of fire rising over the city. His face and arms were burned and his eardrums were ruptured but he had business to attend to. 
He boarded a train and went on an overnight ride to his hometown, Nagasaki. This is where his wife and his child live. Even after being struck by an atomic bomb, this guy went to work three days later. He tried to explain to his boss that Hiroshima had been destroyed by a bomb, and his boss didn't believe him. Just as Yamaguchi was being called a liar, the second bomb dropped so close that the office windows were shattered and a mushroom cloud exploded into the city. Somehow, this guy survived being within close proximity to both nukes. His hair fell out, he became gangrenous, he vomited endlessly, and he was horribly sickened from the radiation. Nonetheless, he actually healed and went on to live a perfectly normal life and died in 2009 at the age of 93. Number 4. The Bagpipes In 1915, 18-year-old Michael McDougall left Halifax, Canada and spent four years fighting in World War I. He had duties as a soldier, but he also had the responsibility of playing the bagpipes to lift the spirits of his fellow army men. He was a soldier in the 25th Battalion Nova Scotian Rifles and completed his service and returned home, bringing his bagpipes with him. But he never really told his family what the bagpipes were used for. He would sometimes take them out, go into the garage, make some music, then come back inside and return the bagpipes to their special box without saying a word to his family. His granddaughter described him to Global News as being a quiet man. It wasn't until the soldier died in 1969 that the bagpipes began to move around. They went to his eldest son, who learned to play them. Then, after his eldest son died, they landed in the hands of somebody else in the family who lived thousands of miles away. His granddaughter, now a woman of her own, was visiting a war memorial when she saw another set of bagpipes on display. She remembered the ones her grandfather used to play and wanted to get them back so that she could put them into a museum as well, where they could stay forever. What followed was a lengthy battle that lasted for nearly two years as the granddaughter tried to wrestle the family bagpipes from another, more distant member of the family all the way across the country. But she finally got them back, and over a hundred years after her grandfather blew them in Europe, they were gifted to the local museum as an important piece of Canadian military heritage. Number 3. Sunken Bones The wreckage of the Tulsa American, a B-224 Liberator bomber built in Oklahoma and the very last of its kind, was just discovered sitting at the bottom of the Adriatic Sea in pieces near the Croatian island of Vis. It was found split into two main sections, with the nose of the plane being found peeled open like a banana. According to the Smithsonian, the wreckage has painted an amazing story of the fate that befell those who had piloted it during the final years of World War II. It was in December of 1944 when the aircraft was badly damaged during a battle with the German Air Force in occupied Poland. The crew of the aircraft tried to make an emergency landing but failed and crashed off the coast of what is today Croatia. Seven of the airmen were saved by brave local fishermen, three were lost. Amazingly, archaeologists working at the crash site found military equipment, articles of clothing, and even a boot. Even more incredible is that human bones were found scattered amongst the wreckage. They haven't been tested yet, but experts are pretty certain that they belong to the three missing soldiers who went down with the aircraft. The remains are currently pending DNA analysis. If any matches are established, the remains are to be given a proper burial. Number 2. The Real Private Ryan the true story behind Saving Private Ryan is far more fascinating than what was depicted in the movie starring Tom Hanks. The movie was based on the real-life story of four brothers who joined the war and went to liberate Europe from Germany. Edward was the first brother to go, shot down somewhere over Burma and presumed to be dead. Then on June 6, 1944, brothers Robert and Fritz began in the assault. Robert was stationed outside the town of saint marie Église, where he held off an onslaught of Germans with the help of two other soldiers to cover the rest of his platoon's escape. He was gunned down in action. At the same time, Preston was on the shores of Utah Beach. He died with the rest of his platoon trying to destroy a German battery. At this point, by June 7th, three of the brothers are believed dead. Somehow, the War Department learned of the three brothers dying and that there was still one left. They decided to dispatch Fritz, the only remaining son, back to the United States. This job fell to Father Francis Sampson, the regimental chaplain. He finally got hold of Fritz and sent him back home. Then the next year in May of 1945, it turned out Edward was still alive. He'd bailed from his plane during the crash and been caught by the Japanese, then eventually freed. He returned to New York and the two brothers were reunited. About 55 years later, Steven Spielberg turned their story into a movie. Number 1. Propaganda and Carrots During World War II, propaganda and carrots went hand in hand. First of all, the truth is that carrots have a large amount of vitamin A. And vitamin A really helps the health of a person's eye. There was a 1998 John Hopkins study that even found supplemental pills could help those with vitamin A deficiency to have better vision. However, carrots are just a small piece of the puzzle and can't actually give you superhuman vision any more than eating too many blueberries can turn you blue. Carrots cannot help you see in the dark. 
But somewhere along the line, the myth was born and it's still around today. How did everyone come to believe that carrots improve eyesight? It probably came because of British propaganda starting in the 1940s. At the time, the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, was attacking during the night when it was darkest. The British government at the time issued blackouts throughout the city to make it more difficult for them to hit their targets. At the same time, the British had developed a very new and very secret radar technology that could pinpoint an incoming enemy before they reached the English Channel. But to keep this information out of the hands of the Nazis, the UK ministry instead blamed the success of their pilots defending the English Channel in the dark of night on a stable diet of carrots. According to historical records, they then started a campaign of propaganda connecting night sight with eating carrots, leafy greens, and yellow vegetables. This was a tactic to confuse the Germans and make them think the British were excellent pilots at night, all because they ate a lot of carrots. What's your favorite legendary war story? Tell me about it in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and check out more amazing videos from the channel.